tough. For the Xbox 360, it's a little bit more complicated. You cannot, at this time, commercially release games for the Xbox 360. The end user license agreement for XNA can be found at creators.xna.com for more information. Requirements of XNA. Depending on what you want to do, it may not require that much. There have been amazing 3D games developed that require a decent video card and many 2D games that do not require such a powerful card. And I'm talking about shader models here. Any decent video card will work right for 2D games and most 3D games. However, if you wish to create a very visually amazing game, you will need to get a shader model, high-end shader model. Now, here are their basic requirements. XP, Service Spec 2 or later, or Windows Vista. For video card, shader model 1.1 is the minimum, and the re recommended is 2.0 or higher, and DirectX 9.0C or higher. You can use any form of Visual Studio 2005 or just get the Visual C Sharp 2005 Express for free. It uses the .NET Framework 2.0. XNA Creators Club membership and live membership for the Xbox 360 development and using live in Windows games are required. Hard drive on Xbox 360 and the DirectX runtime, which is included in the XNA installer. Okay, so now we're going to talk about accomplishments of what this tutorial and game will provide. This game might lack graphics and gameplay, but it is highly recommended for the very first for new developers. There are elements in this game that will stick with you for every game you will make, depending on if it's 3D or not. You will learn how a proper way to design a game, starting with the game design process all the way to the testing phase, and some of those methods will stick with you, some of those will need morphing into 3D stuff. This game is also more object oriented than most simple games are, and this is to show you right away a good way to use game development. This game and tutorial will teach you a lot of useful information that you can expand onto later. You will be introduced to a screen system that will greatly benefit for larger scale games. For this game you won't really find the need for the screen system, but for larger games, you will need a screen system, so I'll teach you that right away instead of teaching you a very basic way than having to change your ideas later on. Now, with a screen system, you can set up various parts of the game into appear at various times, so it's like splitting up your game into multiple stages, like a menu screen or a pause screen. You can, you don't have to put all that code into your basic game engine, you can split it up and then call the pause screen when the user presses start, for example. You can also add actions to these screens. A menu screen, for example, you can press up and down and it'll move the selection of the item. And you press enter on the keyboard, it'll select that item. This game will also include an input system, but we'll focus on keyboard only for this tutorial will go into the gamepad in later tutorials. You can build out these these input systems for highly detailed 2D or even 3D games. So I'll teach you a very basic way to do it now and then I'll teach you to upgrade it later. Despite the high object oriented approach of this game it will be still very simple to do and this tutorial will walk you straight through it. So Next tutorial, we'll do section 2, which is the game design process, how the game works, how to do a game graph, and game art. Then the tutorial after that, we'll talk about the game engine, introduction, modifications. So that will be our first look at the coding process. And we'll also go into the IDE and switch between the IDE and the text tutorial as we go along. So keep an eye out for tutorial 2 called Game Design. Hope to see you next time.